Isn't the answer the same answer? Isn't it the same? Look at what I'm holding my hands, boys. Uh, the amicus brief in the highlighter. Look what highlighter. I'm holding in my hands. <laughs> it didn't take long for me to find it. You know what's odd? Well, anyway, I'll, before I get to that, the answer is the same. Your favorite and your least favorite. The answer's the same, Jimmy. Walt Anderson and his crew holding up play for a moment. Mike Carey, what's the situation here? Well, what it looks like is that they still spotted the ball with a kicking ball waiting for one of the ball guys to come down and give them a regular scrimmage ball. Okay, which is a big difference because the kicking balls are not rubbed up near as much as the game balls used by the quarterbacks. They would be slicker with the rain. From a league perspective, league officials are simply trying to understand exactly what this is after the Colts accusations late, la late, late last night. Yeah, we'll cooperate fully with whatever you know, whatever the league wants us to, whatever questions they ask us, whatever they want us to do. I didn't know anything about it until this morning. Were the Patriots using deflated footballs? I just said the first I heard about it was this morning. The Patriots franchise is on probation as far as I'm concerned, still from spiking. If this was found to be true, like today, tomorrow, next 72 hours, next week, you know what? You're forfeiting your spot in the Super Bowl. We're vacating it. Get out! They probably don't know how they became underinflated, but the fact that they were 11 out of the 12 balls discovered to be underinflated was certainly a big disappointment. This initial findings doesn't feel good to anybody. Bob Kravitz, who broke this story on Deflate Gate after the AFC Championship, what action should the league take? They need to come down hard. I think the first option is for Bob Kraft, the owner of the New England Patriots, to seriously consider firing Bill Belichick because he's a repeat offender. You remember Spygate a couple of years ago. He's messed with the integrity of the game before. The second option, I believe that Roger Goodell should not only find, find them and make them forfeit draft, a draft choice or two, I think he should be suspended for the Super Bowl. If the league has actually contacted you about this deflating football talk. Uh, any questions on that, you should talk to them about. So, a little synopsis there from uh, Jimmy Stewart, Deflategate, Deflategate. Oh, what a story. Oh, I remember so, when it broke. I was like, so good. Well, this is bad, but how bad can this be? And then it felt within a matter of 24 hours. It was a, not na national sports, it was a national news story. Now we have four years here of, uh, of uh, perspective on it. And so I think some things have become clear. And some things were clear on day one. Uh, I think we were all right about some things, all wrong about other things. You know, everyone had something right, everyone had something wrong, I think, at the end of the day. Uh, and I think four years now, we can really sort of definitively say some things. And even if you don't want to admit it, then I, if, and if you can't admit it, then you, you really, I can't help you. Uh, one is how guilty they are and how guilty they looked. And just going back and listening to some of the sound in doing this, like, that blatant lie by Belichick is such a giveaway to me. The first I heard of it was the next morning. They stopped the game. Right. They, I mean, we just heard it. I mean, they stopped the game and swapped out the footballs. I mean, Bill doesn't notice when you stop the game to get a different football. For I mean, so never mind that. But you see how meticulous he is with his notes throughout the game. He they stopped the game. Everyone noticed it. The, the announcers noticed it. The refs noticed it. The, uh, they stopped the game. What do you mean you didn't know it? The first you heard of it was the next morning. It's such a blatant lie when you lie like that and try and separate yourself so badly from it. It's like it's a dead giveaway. Never mind the fact that Mike Kenzel, the league guy, who Bill used to work with with the Jets, is storming up and down the Patriots' sideline, grabbing the equipment guy, grabbing Bears Najari and his assistant outside of the locker room at halftimes, and you're in big trouble. Like, they all knew. I mean, it's such a blatant lie. Uh, so, of course they were doing it. That's number one. Number two, it didn't matter. It didn't matter. So guys like me, like, that's where I had it wrong. I, I thought, well, this is going to impact them. I mean, why wouldn't it if they spent so much time doing it and they put the effort into getting those balls down to a certain level... That must be important to them. So if they don't have the balls at a certain level, that's going to impact their performance, and it didn't. No, it didn't at all. And ultimately, really, it, it, it proved what I always kind of thought it was about was a comfort thing more than anything else for Brady. You know, it was you know, it's like almost like you know, how certain baseball players have their little nervous tick or things that they have to do before they get into the box and get comfortable. Brady liked the balls a certain way just because he liked how they felt a little bit better. That's but all it was, just a, sm a minor equipment violation. Do not delude yourself, Murray, into thinking that people didn't want to hear it. I also have... Oh, no, I look, the numbers back it up. People were oh. into it. These are my ratings that I keep at home. I keep by log every month, every week. Oh, it was board. bananas. Okay. It, was, it was absolutely insane. The biggest months, the biggest quarters we've ever had came right in the heart of Deflategate. Two of our three biggest books, 
were deflate gate months, both the winter that it broke, the winter of 2015, and then what I consider a deflate gate period, which is the fall of 2015 when he won his appeal and it was still, it's all, it dominated. It dominated, dominated, dominated from that, you know, the week of that AFC title game through the entire next football season and uh, all the way up to the suspension and it just dominated. And that's some of the best, well, you know, we've had, uh, you know, knock on wood, good ratings the whole way through, really good ratings the whole way through. That was, n- none was better than that. And it lasted. It lasted a year plus. So don't delude yourself into thinking people don't want to hear it. But you know me. It doesn't take much to get me to go back and pull up my highlighter and my copies of the Wells Report. I have several copies of the Wells Report I found out because I will be go- going digging through, like, uh, uh, drawers, McCarthy, and I'll be looking for, like, tax returns or, like, my kids' old report cards or something. You know, you just sort of stuff business stuff away in different drawers. And I'll just pull up in a drawer looking for, like, <laughs> something like that, and I'll, 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 I'll pop a... A, a copy of the Wells report highlighted. You've got a problem. Oh, my you've God. Got, you've got a real issue. So Is that this, page 34, the kicker version? So this particular this particular incarnation of the Wells report that I have that has all the notes on it and the highlighted stuff, <laughs> and it's all on there. This one, I what I did is I just took the pages that I wanted to read from because I I guess I got sick at one point of coming with a, you know something that thick, so I just I pared it down. But I'll just get to the good stuff. The amount of people who think they weren't doing it, I mean, even at the time, the first time you read the text messages, and you still said, well, what about that deal, Gaslow? These are text messages between the equipment guy who wasn't allowed to touch the balls after they were inspected, and the locker room attendant, McNally and Jastrzemski. Remember this? Oh, yes. So Brady has a bad game against the Jets at home. He's complaining about the footballs. And thus includes, and thus starts this little text change between the two equipment guys. So Jastrzemski tells him that Brady's pissed about last night. McNally, the guy in the locker room, responds by saying, Tom sucks. <laughs> I'm going to make that next ball a effing balloon. <laughs> so, like, right there, stop reading, it's over. The guy who's not supposed to touch the balls, who's alone with the balls in the official's locker room, says, tell him the next time I'm going to make it a balloon. What do you think he's doing? He's talking about his weight. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, some of the excuses. McNally oh, says, oh, okay, oh. he says, tell him the next time I'm going to make it a effing balloon. Jastrzemski says, yeah, I talked to him last night. He actually brought you up. Brady says, I never heard of him. I don't know who he is. I don't know what he does. And you all buy it? <laughs> Just Jastrzemski says immediately, yeah, I talked to him last night. He actually brought you up and said you must have had, must have had a lot of stress trying to get them done. He was right, though, says Jastrzemski. I checked some of the balls this morning. The refs effed us. A few of them were almost 16. Jastrzemski said they didn't recheck them after they put air in them. McNally, F them. 16 is nothing. Wait till next Sunday, he says. Just Jemsey says, OMG, spaz. The next day, they pick it up. McNally says, make sure you blow up the ball to look like a rugby ball so Tom can get used to it before Sunday. And it is, it really is. It's the exchange between these two, because it's been so long since we talked about this. This is the most damning stuff. Oh, my God. Just Jemsey says, I can't wait to give you your needle this week. So they're going back and forth this whole week after the Jets game. Can't wait to give you your needle, smiley face. <laughs> McNally again, F Tom. Make sure the pump is attached to the needle. Effing watermelon's coming. <laughs> Uh, the, and then he says the only thing deflating son is his passer rating. Again, the next day, Jastrzemski, again, I have a big needle for you this week. McNally better be surrounded by cash and new kicks. Again, he's getting paid off with the merch and whatever to uh, pump up the balls or deflate the balls for Brady. He says it better be surrounded by cash and new kicks or it's a rugby Sunday. You go back and read these folks if you just want to get re- re- reacquainted. with what was it? These were the guys in charge of the balls. McNally, F. Tom. Jastrzemski, maybe you'll have a nice si- maybe you'll have some nice size 11s in your locker. Uh, McNally, Tom must really be working your balls hard this week. And so, you know, just go back and forth in the whole thing. And has anyone to this day heard from these guys? Or are no, they no, still, of course not. you know, buried in the desert somewhere? No, they're golfing with Matt Estrella and who's the other one? Matt Estrella was the cameraman in, uh, cameraman in in uh, Spygate, and Matt Walsh was the guy who allegedly taped the. They, 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 they have a regular foursome. They meet in Hawaii <laughs> every Tuesday and play together. I mean, you're never going to hear from them. But again, uh, tell them next week I'm going to make it an effing balloon. F him. 16 is nothing. Wait till next Sunday. Uh, Can't wait to give you your needle. F Tom. Make sure the pump is attached this time. Watermelon's coming. So angry. The only thing deflating is his passer rating. Just... Oh, and just so many other things still stand out so to me. Good. That first Brady press conference where he stood up there, and I just remember yelling at my TV, Get run, him off there. Run, Tom. Yeah, st- you're doing yourself no favors. Shut up. Stop talking. Well... Oh, it was so bad. Why don't we do that right now? 
Tom Brady, that original press conference, Jimmy, why don't we jump to that? Tom Brady, when he comes out and, oh, I don't know, doesn't exactly give you any confidence in the situation. This has raised a lot of uncomfortable conversations for people around this country who view you, a three-time Super Bowl champion, a two-time MVP, as their idol. The question they're asking themselves is, what's up with our hero? So can you answer right now, is Tom Brady a cheater? I don't believe so. I mean, I feel like I've always played within the rules. I would never do anything to break the rules. Um, you know, I believe in fair play and I respect the league and, you know, everything that they're doing to try to create a very competitive uh, playing field for all the NFL teams. It's a very competitive league. Um, you know, every team is, um, you know, trying to do the best they can to win every week. You know, I believe in fair play and uh, you know, always believe in it for as long as I'm playing. Are you comfortable within yourself that nobody on Sunday on the Patriots side did anything wrong? I have no knowledge of anything. I have no knowledge of any uh, wrongdoing of any. Nobody did anything wrong. Yeah, I'm very comfortable saying that. I'm very comfortable saying that nobody did it. As far as I know, I don't know everything. I also understand. Hold on one second. Why are you laughing over there? I mean, he's just he say emphatic nose. He's a bad liar. <laughs> like he starts that thing off by saying, "I don't believe so." No, just say no. Even if you have to lie, it's a hard lie. I don't believe so. It's like saying, "Oh, you took a shower with a girl, and you get caught." You didn't actually fool around, but you took a shower. You know that's cheating. But if your wife asks you, did you cheat? I don't believe so. <laughs> no, it's just a shower. She was there, I was there. We just, we had to get clean. I don't believe that. You know you did. Like that. And hearing this again, it's just so, it's like riding the fence with these answers. If you're going to lie, lie. No, 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 emphatically, no, no. I didn't cheat. I didn't cheat. No, we, we didn't do anything. Everything's just so like, uh, I don't know. Who knows? Who's to say? Ah! Oh, it still gives me like... <laughs> oh, you miss it, Murray! You miss it! You see, it was good! Oh, God. It was good. one bit. No it was, way. It was good eating. It was tremendous eating. We'll hear from Bill's press conference coming up in a second. The week after the flake game. There have been questions raised, and I believe now 100% that I have personally, and we as an organization, have absolutely followed every rule to the letter. And I just feel that on behalf of everyone in the organization, everyone that's involved in this organization, that we need to say something. I've handled dozens of balls over the past week. The texture of the balls is very easy to identify. The pressure of the balls, footballs, is a whole different story. And I would say that our preparation process for the footballs, we have found raises the PSI approximately one pound. When the balls are delivered to the officials' locker room, the officials were asked to inflate them to 12.5 PSI. What exactly they did, I don't know. When the footballs go out onto the field into game conditions, whatever those conditions are, that's where the measurements would be possibly different than what they are in a controlled environment. We all know that air pressure is a function of the atmospheric conditions. If there's activity in the ball relative to the rubbing process, I think that explains why when we gave them to the officials and the officials put it at, let's say, 12 and a half, if that's in fact what they did, that once the ball reached its equilibrium state, it probably was closer to 11 and a half. I'm embarrassed to talk about the amount of time that I've put into this relative to the other important challenge in front of us. I'm not a scientist. I'm not an expert in footballs. I'm not an expert in football measurements. I'm just telling you what I know. Would not say that I'm Mona Lisa Vito of the football world as she was in the car expertise area. All right. And at no time was there any intent whatsoever to try to compromise the integrity of the game or to gain an advantage. Quite the opposite. We feel like we followed the rules of the game to the letter in our preparations. We try to do everything right. We err on the side of caution. It's been that way now for many years. Anything that's close, we stay as far away from the line as we can. And... This is the end of this subject for me for a long time. Oh, it's so good, McCarthy. Don't you miss it? It's better than Brady's press conference because he at least handled himself and he was confident, whereas Brady seemed shook from uh, word yep. one. But all Belichick really did there, now this is something you got a better perspective of, I think, now four years later. All he did was spit out a bunch of official-sounding scientific nonsense, and this is where really, for me, this was like a tipping point moment because yep. after that, most of the Patriots people were like, 
Oh, see? See, he just proved it. See, it was just the air. And then you got all these stupid videos all over social media of people's deflating tires because the weather had changed in the PSI, in the science, in the pseudoscience. And this is where I was like, oh, my God, enough. Like, that, come on with this nonsense. You understand they changed their story. Like, that was their first stab at it, which was the, this ball prep thing. They sort of dropped that. You didn't hear much about that as we went forward. Remember, like, sanding the balls case, down and they went Because they had more and more scientists because scientists are so freaking defensive and protective of the scientific law that when people challenge the ideal gas law like the scientists say no no the gas, I, you know they really want to prove make sure the you know that the ideal gas law is real so they got the, so as the patriots got the, the scientific community behind them on the ideal gas law they dropped this whole business about how they prepped the ball you didn't hear them talk about that much but that was their first sort of foray into trying to explain it yeah it's the way we rubbed them down before you know, they raised it a psi and then it dropped it you know trying to uh, muddy all that and then they just settled on pure PSI but what what does it really matter when the two ball boys go back and forth and say I'm going to make the next one a effing balloon I talked to him last night he brought you up said you must have a lot of stress trying to get them done if it was all legal why would there be any stress trying to get them done right <laughs> he, he says Tom was right though checked a few of the balls this morning a few of them were at 16 F Tom 16's nothing wait till next Sunday wait till next Sunday Rugby balls, watermelons, the only thing deflating sun is this bacerating. So the organization has followed every rule. There was no intent that we've done anything by the letter of the law. And they got guys talking about blowing the things up to rugby balls because the Brady's pissing them off and they're better be surrounded by cash and new kicks. And like, come on, come on, come on, come on. And where are these guys? If these, if they're talking about something else, which, you know, they weren't, where are they? Where are they discovered? Where'd they go? And then they tried to spin it as a weight loss thing. Like, oh, that it, was embarrassing. That was so embarrassing. Okay, so the whole thing did make people angry. It's part of why it was such a great, uh, such a great topic. We'll get to the anger here in a second. Well, I think the one here where the Giants actually put a needle in the ball on the sidelines to test the PSI to make sure. I, 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 and I can't remember what they did. Whether well, it was a game ball or not a game ball, but the Giants did something. Or, or maybe it's when they were on the walkie-talkies. Remember, was that yeah, did the yeah, coach yeah. use the walkie-talkie when he wasn't allowed to use the walkie-talkie? Yes, that's what it was. Yes, something. I, yeah. I I can't remember what the hell it was. But some little thing like that, and that immediately gets, oh, why don't you give them four games? Blah. You know. Uh, so that's what I think this is about. I got fed up with the lawyers. I mean, I can't believe I had to sit down with another legal document and a highlighter, but I did. I saw them this morning. Yeah. yeah. Goldberg writes to Ted Wells. League security personnel subjected him to irresponsible accusations of lying to them, blah, 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 on for a thousand words. The direct email to Ted Wells. They put him both. Since we had an agreement from the outset that, barring extraordinary or unexpected circumstances, each person would be subjected, blah, blah, blah. In hold. Given this history, if you want some added information from Jim McNally, let me know what it is and I will consider the best way to give relevant information to you. Is, go kiss my ass, you blood sucking leech. F you, damn. In bold. And then they send an email on the 17th of March. Here is what the security videos, some of which you acknowledge you had not yet looked at. Here's what these security videos show as to McNally's activities. And then it goes on and on, you know, about him. Uh, no official telling him to stop him walking by the NFL official James Daniels. Don, the Don, and on. From I, 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 I. Like seven different points. And then they go on to say, well, we could tell by your measurements at halftime, which took 14 minutes, and that detail process, you couldn't possibly do it in 95 seconds. He's not doing what you did at halftime. This guy's just taking the top off the ball. You unzip the bag. That's all he's doing. Well, that's not what your guy's accused of doing. Something else in there. So why are you giving me an argument and why are you giving me a false argument? We can dance or we can keep doing this dance back and forth forever. You are not cooperating. F you in bold. Okay, so I set it up wrong. That was just me with the Wells Report in context to one of Goldberg's letters. Back to the league. Murray had his own rant. This is about the Giants thing. This, I, I, I confuse it too. I was just a generic. So I read a brief that sent me through the roof, obviously, right there. Uh, Murray. Got sick of the complaining after the fact over other little ticky tack violation by another team. Spun, I don't even remember this. Spun back to Deflate Gate. Go ahead. And some people say, well, let's go after the Giants because they stuck a needle in the ball on the sidelines to figure out what the PSI was. And on and on and on and on. 
Uh, it's so over. You won the Super Bowl. Can we <laughs> shut up about this? For God's sakes. Okay. Jesus, no. Like, enough of this. Enough of these phone calls. If I ever see that, if I'm on Saturday with Gasper, I see those, I'm, you're getting dropped. I'll never take them. You guys do what you do. This is your show. But can we please, can we can we be adults about this now? This was the best comeuppance this team could have possibly had. And a year that they suspended the quarterback, the best who ever played the game for four games, which was designed to cripple this team this year. They went 3-1 and one without him, and they won the effing Super Bowl. It's over. Shut up. The deflate gate nonsense. How come they're not punishing other teams the same way? They were habitual line steppers. We all knew it, okay? It's over. They won. Be happy. Jesus. Oh. Persecution oh. complex, Mario. The suspension helped you complex. win the Super Bowl. What about the science? How come that <laughs> website's still up? They're not going after these teams. Uh, oh, my God. That just, that really... I don't know. I'm not happy about the snow, and that call just sent me the wrong way. Two years ago, didn't we have an angry beetle? Remember we did a bad, mad beetle? On what? On Friday. I don't Remember, you have Mad Mike and Squeaky? We no, did it. No, no, it, was, uh, it was Angry Beetle. Yeah, Angry Beetle. What, what, what it was on something specifically? Well, no, so we got to come up with some version for Murray. Oh, yeah. Oh, we can do that. No, no I'm typically level headed, but I mean, of all no, things. No, not really. Murray, just no. days later, you're going to call about something like that. Like, oh, who cares at this point? They won. The most improbable oh. comeback ever. Shut up. Okay. Murray, were you visited by the Deflate Gate fairies like Beetle was? <laughs> yeah, guys, if the league gave back the Pats, our, if they gave us our picks, how do you think everyone would react? What do you think? I bet you Wellington Mara would be blowing the top of his head off with a hot Rooney. I bet they'd be pissed. <laughs> I want you to fully get it off. Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was it. No, I'm good now. I'm good now. I just, I, I, I would think that after Sunday that we would be over this, but apparently not. It, there's always going to be that persecution complex. Like, you got it. You got Roger. You gave him the finger. You won the damn game in the most improbable way possible. It's over. In the year that they tried to cripple the franchise with a four-game suspension, you won the Super Bowl. Yeah, and but you, I didn't get closure. <laughs> All right. Oh, yeah, no, that's right. Okay, because we're going to still hear about that. Because you know, I guarantee you, the Thursday night opener is going to be against the Atlanta Falcons. So where is he going to be? Is he going to be in Atlanta with, a, with, with you know, for the third straight time, just like he was last year? He's not going to be here. Who cares if he doesn't show up? You won the Super Bowl in the year that they tried to F you. You won. They won. Yay. Get over it. My God. Oh. <laughs> The worst story in the history of sports. And I'm glad, look, it all worked. It benefited all of us. Uh, you know, you guys, look at the ratings, both stations. It's all great. Now it's over. Over.